Thanks, Jim. Welcome back, everybody. Seton Hall, the hottest team in the country at the moment, ready to do battle with the seventh seed in the southeast, the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. And as Jim just mentioned, the winner of this game advances to the Sweet 16 in Charlotte on Thursday night to take on Florida State, an easy winner over Tulane in the first game of the day here in Orlando. Sean McDonough along with Derek Dickey. It's nice to have you with us. The Pirates are indeed the hottest team in the country. They have won 12 in a row. But Coach P.J. Carlissimo is concerned about Western Kentucky as the Hilltoppers employ a style his team hasn't seen this year. Well, they really do. They play an up-tempo style, a lot of presses, a lot of traps, wants to run the ball up the court 94 feet. P.J. wants to play a half-court game. He wants to slow the tempo down and really get control of this game early. Another concern for Coach Carlissimo is Mark Bell, the five foot eight guard who paced the Hilltoppers to their opening round win over Memphis State. He had nine rebounds at five foot eight. Mark Bell is the leader, senior leader on this basketball team, second leading scorer, leader in assists, but he's a very strong presence when it comes to driving inside, trying to score those hoops. One of the calling cards of Seton Hall under Coach Carlissimo has been their ability to play well when it matters most, and that's at the end of the season. Certainly this year is no exception. It's just the latest strong run to the finish for Coach Carlissimo. They have won 12 in a row, which is now the longest streak in the country as a couple of teams had streaks snapped last night in first-round NCAA action. Terry DeHair is the man who ignites the offense. Terry gets so much credit for his offensive skills, but defensively, he plays the passing lanes exceptionally well and also runs the floor really well. But what he's added to his repertoire this year, the pip triple penetration, able to get inside and score, as well as look for the dish. Starting lineups for Western Kentucky, Brian Brown and Darnell Mee, the forwards, Darius Hall, the center, Darren Horn, and Mark Bell in the backcourt. For Seton Hall, Jerry Walker and Arthur Iskarnishevis, the forwards, Luther Wright at 7-2 is in the middle. Brian Caver, the point guard. Terry DeHair, the two guard. And the officials, Ed Hightower, Duke Edsel, and Lynn Short Nancy. Ralph Willard in his third year as head coach at Western Kentucky and a friend of P.J. Carlissimo. Ralph, formerly an assistant in the Big East at Syracuse. 25 and 5, the record for the Hilltoppers. They enter this one having won seven in a row. While Seton Hall has won 12 in a row to up its record to 28 and 6. That's the second highest win total in a single season in Seton Hall history, surpassed only by the 31 victories in 1988 89, where they went to the national championship and lost to Michigan. It's been a while since these two teams met, but not since December 10th, 1959. Seton Hall leads the all-time series six wins to two. The Hall in white, the toppers in red, and we're underway in Orlando. The last of six games here over three days in Orlando. I'm talking with assistant coach Mike Brown of Seton Hall, he mentioned that there is one area where this team needs to concentrate focus and put the ingredients all together in order to have that complete package to make a run to the Final Four, and that's with Luther Wright. Get consistent play from him on both ends of the floor. 16 seconds into the game, Darnell Mee picked up a foul. He's the best defender on the Western Kentucky team. Jerry Walker had trouble finding the handle and lost it out of bounds. Bell brings the Hilltoppers into the fourth court. This is Darius Hall, number 32. Not much of an offensive threat. Guarded tightly by Jerry Walker, who was the Big East defensive player of the year. Of Kentucky wants to get into their offense. They run a lot of screens. Ralph Willard's team is very similar to that of Kentucky in terms of looking for the outside shot. They average over 18 three-point shots per game. Aaron Horn missed their first shot attempt of this game. Western Kentucky shot the ball very poorly in the win over Memphis State. Almost thought that was a combination of rust. They hadn't played in about 10 days and also nervousness. They will shoot better. Both of those factors eliminated this afternoon. And there's a shot going in from the top of the key from Ryan Brown, the senior from Atlanta. Good penetration once again. Every time you look up, Mark Bell is going to try to do something to draw the defense. When he does, he's always looking to pitch the ball back out of the ground. Already you see Western Kentucky trying to trap when they have the chance out near midcourt. Bell nearly had the steal from DeHair. DeHair might have been bumped down. He got up looking for a foul call, and it was none forthcoming. On the run, Brown, block 
by Luther Wright. Brown again off the rim. Horn scores. Western Kentucky's not a big team, but they are very athletic when it comes to jumping, moving their feet, quick hands, going after that basketball. Right, missed the jam as Caver sent him it along. Walker, it rolls out. Nothing going right for Seton Hall at the moment. Aaron Horn kicked it out. Arnell Mee was eyeing a three, but couldn't catch the pass. Kentucky's a team that seems to be very, very young, and they believe in themselves. They believe that any game they start, they have a chance to win. You talked about it at the outset. Bell's ability to penetrate with his strength at 5'8". And he's not afraid to take shots, even though he's looking up at the trees. 6 nothing Western. Again, they try to trap the hair broke it. Nice look. Right foul this time by Darren Horn. His first. Mark Bell, a man we featured in the opening of this show, is going to penetrate with style, also with a lot of force. He's five foot eight. They lift him at 160 pounds, but a very, very strong player when it comes to driving to the basket. Darren Horn picked up his first foul. The second against Western Kentucky. And it sends Luther right to the free throw line at 7 2. He's the tallest player in Seton Hall history. He's a 68% free throw shooter. Two minutes and 45 seconds into the game, Coach Carlissimo's charge is still scoreless. Luther Wright has to play with confidence. Make missing that first dunk shot might have disrupted his concentration just a little bit. And done some very unfortunate bounces around the rim. It's out of bounds off Darius Hall. Seton Hall will keep it. Adrian Griffin quickly in for Luther Wright. The Hall 0 for 3. Western Kentucky hitting at 50% from the floor. Karnishevich, the junior, lays it in. Arteris Karnishevis, a very underrated player. People in the Big East certainly know what he's capable of doing, but I think the rest of the country is going to get a chance to see in this NCAA tournament exactly how gifted an athlete that he is. The hair, the steel, and then demonstrating some of his gifts. 6-4, Western Kentucky. Well, great pass, Horn. It might have been deflected by DeHair. It wound up in his hand. Very bit too much dribbling. Lost it to Horn. This is Bell pushing. Bell driving. And a held ball. The Hilltoppers get it out of bounds. We talked about how Terry DeHair is capable of scoring points, but look at the hustle on defense. Always playing the passing lane very well, but after he gets the ball, he knows how to take it down and finish the play off. But just an excellent job of concentration and maintaining his dribble. Mark Bell, senior from Louisville, Kentucky. And now Horn off to me. He had a tough offensive day against Memphis State. Coach Willard called it his worst offensive game of the year. He had 10 points on two of 13 shooting, including just one of seven from behind the three-point line. Darnell Mee had his hands filled with Anthony Hardaway from Memphis State. Playing such hard defense took away from his offense. Aaron Horn drives in a three. He has five, and that's the margin for the toppers. Toppers applying a little bit of pressure, just token pressure, trying to get Seton Hall to pick up that dribble. Gary Walker was hacked hard by Darius Hall. First foul on Hall and the third on the Hilltoppers. One of the game plans that Ralph Willard wanted coming in was to, knowing Terry DeHair's a score, he's going to get his points, but make him work for his 20 to 25 points. And don't let the other players on the Seton Hall basketball team have career nights. Gary Walker makes the first. He's a 74% free throw shooter. A senior from Jersey City, New Jersey makes a pair and at our first time out the Pirates are down by three
life. Around every corner, financial questions, choices, surprises. Welcome back to a sold-out Orlando Arena in Orlando, Florida. Second round action of the Southeast region with 15-42 left in the first half. Western Kentucky leads Seton Hall 9-6. This is Bunton, number 34, who has checked into the game for the Hilltop. P.J. Carlesimo's come out with full court pressure. And of course, Western Kentucky now to get some people unfamiliar with handling the basketball to now handle it. Karnishevis a bit too frisky as he tried to deny the pass into Bunton. Sebas Bunton, a player who was recruited by Seton Hall. The foul on Karnishevis was first. Karnishevis of the Pirates is first. Team first. And that's the first foul against Seton Hall. Four and a half minutes to pick one up. Bell for three. Largest lead for Western Kentucky, 12-6. Five points for Bell. The hair, way off. Griffin. Bunton got a hand on the ball. Horn pushes. Bunton is a junior from Louisville. 25 on the shot clock. Karnishevis saw that pass coming. Another example of Seton Hall playing the passing lane. Western Kentucky's going to have to use a few more ball fakes, head fakes. 12-8, Western Kentucky. Horn is guarded by DeHare in the Seton Hall man-to-man. -man. Griffin checking me. Horn was stripped by Griffin. Griffin had the best night of his college career in the opening round win over Tennessee State. He's off to a solid start in his first minute of this one. Bell took it back. Three turnovers by Seton Hall. Me for three. His first points. And perhaps he's breaking out of the cold shooting that plagued him in the first round game against Memphis State. Western Kentucky in this game is three for three from beyond the three-point line. They average 18 shots per game from the three-point arc, and any time they make penetration, they're always looking for that pass out beyond that stripe. The hair, the Big East player of the year, gave it to Walker. He shuffled his feet. couple of substitutions for Western Kentucky. Brian Brown comes back in, and Chris Robinson, number 33, checks in for the first time. He's a freshman from Macon, Georgia. John Leahy in for the first time for Seton Hall for Jerry Walker. Ralph Willard wants these Hilltoppers from Western Kentucky to play good, quick defense. Get to the ball quickly, either on the offensive boards or loose balls, and also move your feet quickly. You will be able to force turnovers if you continue to work hard. Bell guarded by Caver. Serious size advantage for Caver, who's nearly 6'5. Robinson shot short. And out of the pile comes Horn with the ball and a whistle against Seton Hall. It's on Karnishevis, his second. Just what we talked about, getting the loose balls quickly. Looks like the Hilltoppers are going a little more aggressively than Seton Hall's for balls that are down below your waist. You have to work at that. You have to actually get down and dirty. Both the right back in as Karnishevis took a seat with his two fouls. 13 minutes remaining in the first half. Western Kentucky, the number seven seed in the Southeast. Tournament champions in the Sun Belt Conference. Going a seven-point lead. Horn pass deflected by DeHair. Horn tried to make up for the turnover with a steal. Instead, he compounded the error by picking up a foul. Foul is on number 33. Chris Actually, they charge it to Robinson. Both Horn and Robinson grabbed the hold of DeHair. The foul on Robinson, his first. Griffin, a freshman from Wichita, Kansas. DeHair, a long three. Griffin, the rebound. 
Seton Hall has to make those outside shots so they can continue to look down low. Luther Wright went out of the game for a couple minutes, coming back with a fresh attitude. See if he can help rebound the basketball and also get some scores down on the block. The hair. Part of his game has improved this year, his ability to penetrate off the dribble, create his own shots or shots for others. His shot was off the mark, but it'll go out to Seton Hall as Horn couldn't save it. Darren Horn did a great job of going after that basketball, but threw it off of his own teammate. Western Kentucky off to a much better shooting start than in game one Thursday night against Memphis State. The Pirates are cold. Here's Michael Fralix, a freshman from Fredonia, Kentucky. It must be a tradition, the very affectionate hug for Bell when he replaced him, because we saw that Thursday night as well. I think it might be something that uh, a lot of players use as, as good luck or as a confidence builder. Freelich just a freshman coming in the game. Marcella Senior. Trouble getting it in. And finally, Caver did inbound to Adrian Griffin. Brian Caver played only 13 minutes against Tennessee State in the first game due to foul trouble. Leahy off the money. It's ripped down by Brian Brown. Then he rips it away from Terry DeHair. DeHair wanted a jump ball. Horn pulls up. Buffley off the glass for two more. He has seven. He only averages nine a game. Darren Horns from a basketball mecca. Takes streak. High school down in Lexington, Kentucky. Knows how to score. DeHair. Lock the call. As... Brian Brown stepped in trying to take the charge. First foul on Brown. You always cringe and hold your breath when you see a player going into the middle and losing their balance. Terry DeHair doing a nice job with his penetration, but he does come, come down unscathed. But you have to like the fact that Seton Hall's not shooting the ball well from the outside. DeHair's going to try to get some higher percentage shots for his team. Danny Hurley replaces Brian Caver at the point for Seton Hall. Makes the first. He's the leading score for Coach Carlesimo. It's just under 22 points per game. And it's tough to find a weakness. Certainly free throw shooting is not a weakness. He's at 82% for the year. Terry DeHair has an excellent opportunity to go on to the next level. DJ thinks he could be a lottery pick. Western Kentucky by seven. Robinson of Western, his second. Take a look at Western Kentucky. We didn't see the beginning of that play, but they opened the floor to where they give themselves enough angles to be able to make a pass to get the ball inbounds. Once they get it inbounds, they're looking to attack. They want to try to get the ball to the basket, come up the middle, look to your wings, and try to get a layup if you can. Our initiative is back in with two fouls for the Hall. 16 fouls already against Western Kentucky. So it'll be bonus for Seton Hall on the next Western Kentucky foul. The Pirates have only been called for two fouls more than nine minutes into the game. The nine-point lead for Western. Ralph Willard said he's going to mix his defenses just a little bit. The hair off from three-point range. Brown saved it, but then it went off the hands of Cephas Bunton. Cephas Bunton, along with Chris, Bra Chris Robinson from Western Kentucky, were actually recruited by P.J. Carlisimo staff at Seton Hall. Ball is it just one of its last seven shots from the floor. Danny Hurley was stripped in the crowd. And Brown kept it alive. This is Kralix bringing it into the forecourt as Mark Bell is on the bench getting a breather. Another display of good quick hands, quick feet by Western Kentucky. Freilich bounces through the legs of Robinson. Dribbled dangerously close to midcourt. Also dribbled in front of Terry DeHair. Freilich with a turnover waiting to happen. Hurley missed the layup. Numbers for Western Kentucky. Hurley tried to sneak up behind Freilich. Alone for three. Robinson the miss. Right the rebound. 
Steve Hall only has three field goals in the game. You can make it four now as DeHaar knocks one in. They've turned it over five times. Terry DeHaar is so smart when it comes to getting the best shot, a high percentage shot. Coming from the right side, he gets right into the middle. Me into traffic, threw it away into the arms of DeHaar. Once again, Terry DeHaar playing the passing lanes. Good quick hands, tips the ball out to himself for the layup. Four straight points for Seton Hall. Catch the Western lead to five as we approach nine minutes remaining in the first half. The Hilltoppers from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Fralix, strong drive. Beautiful layup. Very nice shot by Michael Fralix over the top of Luther Wright. Whenever you have a shot blocker seven-footer in there, you have to put the ball up high on the glass. Karnishevis spots up for three. Well short. Early the rebound. Early at a strong game in the first round Thursday night against Tennessee State. He had nine points and five rebounds in 22 minutes against the Tigers. Here was fouled as he pulled up in traffic. Going to take a look at Terry DeHair. Going to make this steal. He's going to be coming in the left part of your screen over here. Good quick hands by DeHair to make that tip away, but Seton Hall has increased their defense. They've actually come out a little bit further. Now they're playing the passing lanes a little bit better. Steve is Bunton was just called for his first foul. And that creates the bonus the situation. The seventh team foul. There is Hall. Comes back in for Bunton. Karnishevis goes back to the Seton Hall bench. The hair makes the first. He has nine of the 15 Seton Hall points. Terry to here on his release. We're going to watch his foot feet footwork just a little bit. On his release, he actually leans into the shot, but there's nothing wrong with that. Brian Caber gives DeHair a rest. Ten points for DeHair in less than 12 minutes. There he has three steals as well. Western Kentucky by five. We approach eight minutes remaining in the first half here in Orlando. The winner meets Florida State in the Southeast Region Sweet 16 Thursday night in Charlotte. Me, the bell is back in. Ryan Brown wide open threw up an air ball from 12 feet. Give credit to Seton Hall's defense for not allowing Western Kentucky to get their hands on the on the ball in a good shooting position. Luther Wright was right in the hand, in the face. Adrian Griffin and Jerry Walker all for a travel. 7.39 left in the first half. It's Western Kentucky by five. You are watching the NCAA Basketball Championship on CBS. All right, the team's back on the floor at Orlando. Let's squeeze in a look at the other two sites. First in Salt Lake City, a Vanderbilt has a 12-point lead over Illinois. Illinois with the basketball inside four minutes to go in the first half, Mike. And really, it's been Vandy start to finish, Jimmy. They've shot the ball very well. McCaffrey has 12 points. They're four or six from three. And Vandy is a very tough team when they have the lead because they can pass it and shoot it so well. All right, BYU in Kansas, in Chicago. This is a two-seed in the Midwest, Kansas. And Kansas in this game now leading by three with that hoop. Raph? Uh, BYU, big team in blue here. Has played a lot of zone, but all of a sudden Kansas able to make some threes from outside. Jordan with two. Walters starting to penetrate a little bit. So the lead down to one. We hope to get you a closer look at the two games at halftime. Right now, let's send you back to Sean McDonough with Derek Dickey. Thank you, gentlemen. While you were away, Western Kentucky had a three-point shot from Mark Bell and Brian Caber threw it away at the other end. This is Adrian Griffin with a steal and a slam. Just when Western Kentucky starts to make a very positive run, they make a mistake. They make a turnover, give Seton Hall a chance to get back into the basketball game. Almost able to break it open are the Hilltoppers. They have never trailed. They've led by as many as nine. 
They're up six in the moment with six and a half minutes left in the first half. Brian Brown has had uh, Luther Wright guarding him a couple of times at the free throw line. Don't be surprised if he tries to take him one on one. Great hustle by both Bell and Horn, but Horn touched the ball on the sideline. Another opportunity to take a look at some great defense by Seton Hall. Adrian Griffith going to come down with the slam after a very good steal. Most of the fans in attendance here are Florida State fans, and they're cheering for the underdog Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, and that's why you heard a lot of groaning. They're also groaning because as they look up at the scoreboard, eight fouls have been called against Western Kentucky and only two against Seton Hall. That's the second personal on Darnell Mee. The leading scorer for Western Kentucky, and according to Ralph Willard, one of the best defenders in the country. He did a great job holding Anthony Hardaway of Memphis State to 8 of 21 from the floor the other night. The here, 5 for 5 from the line. Player of the year in the Big East Conference. And a second team All-American by both AP and UPI this year. First Seton Hall All-American in 40 years back to Walter Dukes in 1953 who led the Pirates to the NIT championship. The lead is narrowed to four as we approach six minutes remaining. Me, the MVP of the Sun Belt Tournament. Western Kentucky beat New Orleans to win the automatic bid out of that conference. Darren Horn, the baseline shot. He has nine. He's already matched his season average. Darren Horn's known for his outside shot, also his leadership for the just being a sophomore. Me. For Darnell Me, and they push the lead back up to eight. This is what PJ Carlissimo wanted to avoid a run and gun up and down game. Western Kentucky plays the passing lanes very well, always looking to tip the ball away if they can. Luther Wright has gone to the bench. John Leahy is back on the floor for Seton Hall. He's a good outside shooter. Walker, nice feed from DeHare. That's a chance for a three-point play. And a big problem now for the Hilltoppers as Darnell Mee has just picked up his third foul. Seton Hall wants to get the ball inside the painted area, inside the free throw line. Try to get as many high percentage shots as they can. You see Darnell Mee going to the bench, but look at Terry DeHair taking the defense with him, looking for the dish down low, but that's nice concentration by Walker to be able to muscle the ball up inside the basket. Terry Walker at the line, a 74% free throw shooter. Finishes the three-point play. With 5.19 left in the first half, Western Kentucky leads by five. The Hilltoppers in red have led the throughout. Lead has been as much as nine. And a mock cheer from the crowd as a foul called against Seton Hall in the third against the Pirates in the half. The first on Caver. Western Kentucky's been called for nine fouls. The Hilltoppers will inbound it from the sideline. The Hilltoppers from Western Kentucky have done a great job at defense, playing the passing lanes, playing the pressing, up-tempo style that they like to play, getting loose balls, also hitting three-point shots. And a foul call on the floor. John Leahy called for a hold, and that could have gone either way as Paul extended the arm, it appeared, to shove Leahy away. Florida State already a winner. They routed Tulane in the first game of the day here in Orlando. 94-63 was the final in that one. The Seminoles await the winner of this one in the Southeast region. Sweet 16. Five minutes left in the first half. Mark Bell, senior leader out of Louisville, Kentucky, is doing an outstanding job getting the ball in his hands, looking for his teammates on the break as well as half court, able to hit that outside long-range three-point shot. Bell is skipping through the traffic, winds up in three-point land and missed a shot, bunts in the offensive rebound and score. First points for Cephas Bunton. Western Kentucky does a great job with their very strong athletic ability in terms of rebounding on both ends of the court, especially the offensive end. 
Hall talk about strength and Hall won the strength battle from Caver and ripped the ball out of the Seton Hall point guard's hands. Bunton. Walker appeared to get a piece of it. Seton Hall needs to tighten up their defense just a little more. They've gotten some gambles, made some steals, gone down for some shots, but they want to play half court. They want to try to slow the game down a little bit on Western Kentucky. The hair brought it into a crowd and was fouled by Darius Hall. His second, and that is the tenth team foul against the Hilltoppers, so Seton Hall will be shooting two the rest of the way. Ralph Willard, a graduate of Holy Cross, a native of Brooklyn, New York. His accent is sometimes not easily understood by the folks in Bowling Green, Kentucky. As a matter of fact, when he took the job at his opening press conference, he talked about one of his goals being to fill the arena. And those in Bowling Green had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> Ralph Willard has done a tremendous job with recruiting for his Hilltopper basketball team. Looks like we have a blood situation on the Western Kentucky side. Mark Bell. We mentioned earlier when there's blood, the player has to go out of the game and be tended to, have it bandaged and covered up before he can return. And Jerry DeHair is the line. 9 of 11 of the Pirates, one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. Seventh coming into this game in the nation at 75 and a half percent as a team. And 10 of 12 today as the hair made the first. This is a time of the year when a team needs to make their free throws. Team that shoots the best from the field and the free throw line is going to continue to advance. The hair, a miss, and it wound up in the hands of Fralix with 345 left in the half. Fralix had Bunton open. The pass was off his fingertips. We'll return to Orlando after this on CBS. Thursday night against Memphis State, Western Kentucky shot only 38% for the game, and they were 3 of 17 from three-point land. Big improvement in both of those numbers this afternoon against Seton Hall. And as a result, the Hilltoppers lead by six with 342 left in the first half. The Hilltoppers are actually controlling this basketball game by playing exceptional defense, getting to the boards, getting to loose balls quicker than Seton Hall. Seton Hall still has more turnovers than field goals. Make it 10 turnovers now and only seven field goals. The quickness displayed by these Hilltoppers from West Kentucky is very impressive. Bunton. There was Bell up in the offensive glass at 5-8, but it wouldn't go in for him. Leahy, sophomore, in the Walker. He's fouled by Brown, a chance for a three-point play for Jerry Walker. And that's the second foul on Brian Brown. That's strong, very, very strong for Jerry Walker. Six foot seven inches, 245 pounds out of St. Anthony's High School. Very, very strong move, but Seton Hall has to continue to look inside to get that high percentage shot. Chris Robinson back in. Replacing Greg Glass, who was in very briefly. Glass didn't play at all Thursday night against Memphis State. Walker finishes a three-point play, cutting the lead to three. Seton Hall shooting free throws very well. Had they not been, they might not be in, in this basketball game right now. Kentucky hasn't shot any. Bell misses a three. The hair hit the deck on the rebound action. And it's going against Western Kentucky's Chris Robinson. And that's three fouls on the freshman from Macon, Georgia, selected by USA Today as one of the top 50 freshmen in the country this year. Foul trouble is actually hurting Western Kentucky at this stage in the game. They have two players. Darnell Mees on the bench also with three fouls in this first half. The glass comes back in. And the hair toes the strike. There's 
now seven of nine from the line. And Western Kentucky's lead is three points with 3.04 left in the first half here in Orlando. The hair cuts it to two. He has 14 points. Since me went out of the game, Derek, with the three fouls, he just sent the momentum shifting to Seton Hall. Absolutely, because Seton Hall is getting to the foul line. Western Kentucky played well early, made some great steals, actually took control of this basketball game. A few turnovers, costly turnovers, just like this one, and made three free throws by the Hall, enabled them to get back in this game. It was Bell who turned it over, DeHare who converted it, and Seton Hall, which has failed by as much as nine in the first half, has battled back to not the score of 30. They're on a 6-0 run. The Hilltoppers need to get a good shot this time. Showing a little bit more patience, running a Kentucky style, if you will. Offense at the top of the key, trying to get someone free, spreading the floor a little bit. 12 on the shot clock. Bell picked it out. Glass for three. three. Glass, who did not play at all Thursday night against Memphis State, knocks in his first shot attempt of the tournament. He's a sophomore from Elton, Kentucky. Actually transfer from Alabama. Very good basketball player. Good quickness. DeHair on fire in the first half. He has 18 points. Talk about good quickness. That's a quick release. Terry DeHair has not worked quite as hard as Ralph Willard would have wanted him to get these 18 points the first half. Now, Coach Willard said, you know he's going to get his 20. You just have to make sure he doesn't get 30. He's on his way towards 30. Plus. 25 on the shot clock. Western Kentucky with a one-point lead over the number two seed in the southeast, Seton Hall. Bell shot off the mark. Brown kept it alive, but the Hilltoppers couldn't track it down to the corner. Seton Hall will inbound with a chance to take the lead for the first time today. Western Kentucky's now gotten into a pattern where they're taking quick shots. Not only are the shots quick, but they don't have proper rebounding position on the weak side. The hair for three in the lead. Race for it early. Got a hand on it. That should be Western Kentucky ball, and it is. Coming up, Prudential Securities at the half with Jim, Bill, and Mike. That is 58 seconds away. Seton Hall now 0 for 5 from three-point land. And the rookie day, the gentlemen, on the progress of these teams as we pass out. That's only the fifth foul of the half against Seton Hall. It's on Danny Hurley, his first. Because his brother is in action today in Chicago against California. Bobby Hurley and Duke taking on Cal. Our colleague Leslie Visser told us yesterday that Bobby Hurley on Thursday prior to Seton Hall's first game called to wish Danny well. And they shared their hopes that they would meet in the championship game in New Orleans. That's the only way the brothers Hurley could meet again. They played in the tournament last year when Duke eliminated Seton Hall from the NCAA and Dan Hurley did not score a point. He'd like to have a chance to erase that memory. I understand that their father and coach Hurley is still with St. Anthony's uh, up in New Jersey. They're still in the high school basketball playoffs. It's been delayed a few times by the snow that hit the Northeast. That's the game clock and the shot clock is just about one second behind it. Essentially, they can take the last shot of the half. This has to be a confidence builder for Ralph Willard's basketball team going into the half, either with the lead or the last shot at the half. Bell down the lane. Lays it in. Seton Hall with time. Three seconds. The hair was well defended. That won't count. 
So after losing the momentum, Coach Willard's Chargers might have gotten it back with the lay-in by Bell just prior to halftime. At the end of the first half, the score, Western Kentucky 35 and Seton Hall 32. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by AT&T, the right choice. Oldsmobile, official car for NCAA championships. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that fresh, pure, natural taste. Nothing beats a bud. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. The people of Nike, who encourage you to just do it. And by Coors Light, the silver bullet. It's the right beer now. There's one guy who did not want the rock. Orlando Arena in Orlando, Florida. Half time of the sixth and final game played here this week. And the number two seed, Seton Hall, is on the short end of a 35-32 score. Western Kentucky did its damage from the three-point line. They were five of nine in the first half from beyond the arc, while Seton Hall did not connect from three-point country. But Western Kentucky did not get to the free-throw line, and the Pirates stayed in the first half by going 12 of 16. Western Kentucky has a chance to really do well in this basketball game if they can keep Darnell Mee in the game and out of foul trouble. We've got 3,000 in the first half. His third foul came with 5.23 remaining in the half. Western Kentucky led by five then. Walker pushes it in. He has 10. He and DeHair have combined for 28 of the 34 Seton Hall points. They got two points off the bench in the first half, and that was it. One point lead for Western Kentucky. Aaron Horn gave it to Darnell May, who's back in with three fouls. Horn, a bit too anxious and traveled. Seton Hall beginning the second half with big Luther Wright, 7'2", 270-pound center on the bench. And the reason for that, he's not able to keep up with the pace of this game. The hair off to Karnishevis. And now Griffin starting the half instead of Wright. The hair pulls up for three. Loose ball rebound. Cracked down by Darren Horn, the sophomore from Lexington, Kentucky. Out of Tates Creek High School, his backcourt made in high school was Coach Ralph Willard's son, Keith, who's now at Wagner. Coach Willard has another son who's in high school right now and a top prospect, Kevin Willard. Kevin wants to play for his dad. His dad isn't sure that that's such a good idea, although he's certainly capable of playing at that level. Well, that's a tough decision whenever you have one of your children playing for you. Bell. Oh, did everything but score. And a foul on the follow-up action against Brian Brown. And that's his third. So Robinson, Brown, and me all have three. Mark Bell has been very entertaining throughout the entire weekend here in Orlando and does a great job at entertaining the fans with that move, trying to get that shot to go in. Unable to get it, but you have to like the way he takes his body inside at only five foot eight inches. Seton Hall has never led in the game until now. Arteris Karnishevis with the baseline jumper. He has six. The Pirates have the lead for the first time this afternoon. Me. Fouled. And he'll go to the line for the first free throw attempt of the game for Western Kentucky. That's the reason why Ralph Willard wants to keep Darnell Mee in the game. He's their leading scorer, also their leader in rebounds. Get him in the game, get the ball in his hands, let him become a little more active, and also get to the free throw line. Foul was on Adrian Griffin, his first. Number three, Darnell Mee. misses the first. He's a 70% free throw shooter. Three fouls on me, Robinson, and Brown. Seton Hall doesn't have anybody in foul trouble at the moment. Oh, 
Me rattled the second one in. Six points for Darnell Me. We're tied at 36, two minutes into the second half. Kentucky still going into their press, trying to trap the ball if it gets to one of the corners. The hair guarded by Me. Walker has punted on him and has trapped the hair. It spins off. Caver got a hand on it above the rim, but couldn't knock it in. Me. Stolen by Griffin. Karnishevis alone for three. That bounces in and out. Walker fouled on the floor by Darren Horn. That's his second. You hate to see fouls committed, but that might not be a bad foul by Darren Horn because there's no question that Jerry Walker had the inside position and probably would have gotten the ball back up to the, to the glass. De Hair at 18 in the first half. Turned it over. It was intercepted by Darius Hall. 11 turnovers by the Pirates. Horn off a screen. Knocks it in. 11 for Horn. That's better than his season average of nine a game. And the Hilltoppers lead again. Looks like Ralph Willard's game plan is starting to work a little bit better for him right now. Boy, Me has to be careful. He was reaching in on Walker and could have picked up his four. He backed off as Walker laid it in. 12 points for Jerry Walker. That's his average. Very easily could have been called for that foul, Sean. 38 all. Bell blocked by Caver. Western will inbound it under the bucket. Western Kentucky on their defensive end is also now making Terry DeHare work a lot harder to try to get open for a shot and either get the ball out of his hands or make him just look away from going to the hoop. Horn had it rattle out. We've noticed in the six games here in Orlando, the rims aren't very forgiving. No, they're not. They're very, very tight. Usually in an NBA arena is where you'll find that. Walker missed a short one. Me dumps it off to Bunton 4 2. Bunton got off to a slow start this year because of an injury, suffered a broken wrist in the preseason, didn't play until January. You can see him getting better and better at the end of the year. A lot more confidence he's playing with right now. The hair leaned in to score. His first point to the half, he has 20. Me lost the grip. 15-53 remaining in Orlando. We're tied at 40. Hall oh, nearly lost it. Karnishevis lays it in. Nearly coast to coast for Karnishevis, the junior from Lithuania. He has eight points, and Seton Hall leads again by two. A very good display of how quick Arturis Karnishevis is once he got the ball out in front of himself, was able to go all the way down and finish that play off. Florida State awaits the winner of this one. They blew out Tulane earlier today here in Orlando. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Griffin stolen. Bell had it back momentarily. Leahy looked like a travel. No call. Griffin rolls over. And the Western Kentucky fans are really in an uproar. Teams are doing a great job at hustling after loose balls. Western Kentucky got a lot of those balls early in the first half, which enabled them to get this lead. Now, Seton Hall is going after the ball. Bell called for the foul as he collided with Walker, and that's a mismatch in the low post. Take a look at both these teams trying to find a handle on the basketball. Nobody there. Leahy actually comes up with the ball. No foul was called, but the fans are still going after it, and usually when you try to get up, the referees call travel. No call was made. On either occasion, and Karnishevis is called for a charge. Will they count the bucket? No, sir. No, they will not. Lynn Short Nancy waved it off. And three fouls now on Karnishevis. The first to reach three fouls for P.J. Carlissimo. Take a look at Mark Bell, 5'8", 160 pounds, sacrificing his body for the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers to absorb that charge. Seton Hall by two. Horn trying to shed Leahy. Leans in. No basket. 
Waved off by the outside official, Duke Edsel. As John Leahy is called for the foul. His second. The Western Kentucky fans were not very pleased with that call. They felt like it should have been a basket, but in this league, you do not get continuation, only in the NBA. The man speaks from experience, having played for the Golden State Warriors championship team in 75. Bunton missed the short one, but was fouled. By the way, Derek Dickey, happy birthday. Thank you very much. And also to Mike Francesa back in the studio. It's his birthday today also. Wow. He's a lot older than you. <laughs> I don't think the folks who've watched this this week would believe that you are 42 years old today. With a grandchild. Mm. Bunton. His uncle, Granville, one of Western's all-time leading rebounds. Matter of fact, Granville Bunton had 27 rebounds in a game in 1972. Two other uncles, Gil and Stanley Bunton, played for Louisville in the early 70s. Played against Bill Bunton at the University of Louisville when I was at the University of Cincinnati. Very good basketball tradition in that game. And Cephas off the mark with the second one. A one-point lead for the Hall with 14-22 remaining here in Orlando. Walker powers in, charge, no basket. First foul on Jerry Walker, it was Bunton who took the charge. The quickness of Western Kentucky Hilltoppers once again is going to pay off for them. Take a look at the footwork, get down inside. Cephas Bunton got the position, able to establish it, drawing that charge once again for the Hilltoppers. DJ didn't like the call, it did look like Walker lowered the shoulder. Right into Bunton who had the position. Western Kentucky with the ball down by one. Bunton, too strong as he tried to score over Karnishevis. Foul on the floor, it's on Adrian Griffin. That's his third. So after only being whistled for five fouls as a team in the first half, the Pirates are starting to pile them up here in the second half. That's team foul number six. Only one and one. On the next foul against Seton Hall, still 14 minutes remain. Hilltoppers are being a lot more aggressive, attacking the basket now in the second half. And I'm sure Ralph Willard looked at the same stat sheet we did and saw that his team did not get to the free throw line. Bell, the youngest of 18 children. He'll be the first to earn a college degree. Coach Willardson, when he went to Mark's house to recruit him, he had to get up every 20 seconds and be introduced to another member of the Bell family. Caver found a seam and missed the layup. Chris Robinson cleared the miss. Bell to the cutting horn, one-hander, wouldn't go. He was bumped by Terry DeHair. And that's the bonus. It's the first foul on DeHair. We're at Orlando Arena in Orlando, Florida. This is the first time ever the city of Orlando has hosted the NCAA tournament. They've done a terrific job. The Southeast region action. Second round. Western Kentucky hanging with Seton Hall. The Pirates looking for their 13th consecutive win. They're the number two seed in the Southeast region. And the winner of this one will advance to the Sweet 16 and meet Florida State on Thursday night in Charlotte, the Seminoles, an easy winner earlier this afternoon here over Tulane. Western Kentucky Hilltoppers have done a great job the first half with defense, playing the passing lane, getting to the basketball quickly, not only on the floor, but on the boards as well. And they've gone down and executed on their offensive end, hit some threes, and now they're getting back to the free throw line where they didn't go the first half. Florida State has advanced with the win over Tulane. Horn made the first to tie it. He's a 75% free throw shooter. He has 12 points and now 13. And it's the Hilltoppers by one. Approaching 13 minutes remaining. Curly fouled in the backcourt by Chris Robinson. That's his four. Ralph Willard cannot afford to have foul trouble for his team. Even though Seton Hall is not going to the foul line on this trip, 
Robinson's going to have to come out of the game with those four fouls. Number three. It's really the first game here in Orlando of the six in which the fouls have been a part of the story. Darnell Mee back in. He's been playing with three since the start of this half. That was the fourth team foul on Western Kentucky, so they're still a ways from the bonus. Early here to carry it. The crowd grown. Walker scores. 14 for Jerry Walker. Good experience by Jerry Walker using his body. You notice Terry DeHarris not touch the ball the last couple of times down the floor for Seton Hall. Me, great pass, slam dunk, Darius Hall. His first bucket of the ball game. It's a one-point lead for WKU. Hurley tripped by me. That's number four. Early still on the floor and coach Willard is pondering what he is going to do with Darnell me who has picked up his fourth foul with 12 38 remaining Danny Hurley after being inserted in the game has become very assertive especially when it comes to distributing the basketball and this particular play comes up with a little bit of a turn of the ankle but I thought he did a great job in being the leader out there someone PJ Carlissimo has to have bring the basketball up the court and also distribute it get it into the hands of Terry DeHair also get it down on the block to Jerry Walker really a poor decision by me with the three fouls to run that close to Hurley step for step Freshman in one thing but he was as you saw it close enough to triple I agree with that we got a little over 12 minutes to go let's find out if that is going to be a factor in this game it was in the first half when me went out Karnishevis called for a charge and he's the first pirate to pick up his fourth foul. That's a big call. Arteris Karnishevis is going to attack the basket. He's doing a great job because Seton Hall needs to get higher percentage shots. The second half they've struggled because Western Kentucky has tightened up their defense. But in going to the basket strong, Arturis did pick up his fourth foul and has to leave the game. Fralix is in for me. Leahy back in for the hall. Fralix misses a three-pointer. DeHair with the rebound. Terry DeHair at 18 points in the first half. He has only two here in the second. We've played eight minutes in the second half. 12 minutes remaining. DeHair has two more with a chance for three. Showing why he's the Big East Player of the Year. Terry DeHair is using his experience. Catches the ball on the wing, is going to put his head down and drive straight to the basket. Knowing Western Kentucky is very close to being in foul trouble, continue to attack. The foul was on Brian Brown, his fourth. And he goes to the bench with the four fouls. Chris Robinson is playing with four for Western Kentucky. So Brown and me, a couple of starters on the bench with four fouls. Arnishavis on the Seton Hall bench with his four. The hair now 9 of 11 from the line. He has 23 points. Seton Hall leads by two. It's back in New York. Seton Hall is not the only two seed in trouble at the moment because in Chicago, in the Midwest, the two seed Kansas up only a point on BYU with 6.30 remaining in the game, Bill Raftery. Pretty good hands when you've got guards like Adonis Sheridan and Rex Wolf and Rex with 21 points, making threes, penetrating, being creative. They've got to get it into the open floor. BYU with the zone has prevented the quick releases and the open floor opportunities. Size, get it inside BYU philosophy. And that's been their strategy so far. All right, Mike, let's take it to Salt Lake City, Illinois, and Vanderbilt. Looks like Vandy in this one inside four minutes to play, leading by 13. Vandy with the ball in the white, as you said, Jimmy up 13. They led by 17 in the game. Billy McCaffrey, 25 points. Vandy, a tough team to chase in this spot. They'll spread you. They pass the ball very well, and they make their free throws. Very tough team when they're in front. All right, folks, we'll keep you posted, especially on that BYU-Kansas story that's brewing. Now back to Orlando with Sean and Barry. against North Carolina. Seton Hall leads by two. The foul of the Pirates, Jerry Walker, his second, and Cephas Bunton to the line for Western Kentucky. The one and one opportunity. That was the ninth foul against the Pirates. So it'll be two shots hereafter for Western Kentucky. 
Point is only a 60% three four shooter. He's two of three from the line today. Button is six points. Tie ball game, 47 apiece. With 11-18 remaining. Western Kentucky did not shoot free throws very well against Memphis State. They are so far in this game against Seton Hall. If they can make those, they have a chance to stay in, if not win this game. Early found Griffin open. Griffin was starting to look up at the bucket and kicked it out of bounds. 15th turnover by Seton Hall. That's an uncharacteristically high number at this point in the game for the Pirates. And as we mentioned at the outset, for those of you who were with us, P.J. Carlismo was very concerned about his team playing Western Kentucky because they haven't played a team that likes to press and trap for the full 40 minutes all year long. Bell hit the deck as he missed. Trying to draw the foul. There was not much contact between me and Danny Early. Early pulls up and misses. And Bunton kept it alive for Chris Robinson. Ahead of the field, Darius Hall missed the layup. Bunton missed the tip. Leahy control. Leahy knocks it in. His first point. He had two points in 15 minutes on Thursday against Tennessee State. Away from the ball, a foul on Seton Hall. It's on Jerry Walker. And it's his third. Foul's on number four, Adrian Griffin, his fourth. Check that, the foul's on Griffin, and that's his fourth. Still to come on CBS Today, Cal and Duke from Chicago. And out west, Santa Clara and Temple to meet in Salt Lake City. Broncos, of Coach Dick Davies, pull the upset of the first round. The 15th seed, Santa Clara, eliminated Arizona. They're playing a very good Temple team. Santa Clara's got their hands filled because John Chaney intentionally goes out and plays a very tough schedule during the year so that he can prepare his team for the postseason tournament. And I think Temple Owls have a very good chance to advance if they continue to play like they have played the earlier round. First free throw was a line drive into the front rim. 64% free throw shooter. He made the second. Seton Hall leads by one with 10-10 remaining. Western Kentucky did not shoot a free throw in the first half. There's seven for 10 from the line in the second half. Early, the baseline, and then kicked out to the hair. Leahy nearly turned it over. Munton saw the pass coming but couldn't get there quickly enough. Scramble. Robinson takes it away. Again, the quickness by the Hilltoppers going after the loose ball. Hall lays it in. Leahy changed the shot, but it still dropped for Darius Hall. The sophomore from Detroit has four, and Western Kentucky has the lead back. Caver blocks the call. It's against Darius Hall. That's three on Hall. This is a very difficult angle to watch this shot. Take a look at Caver as he's coming right at you. Hall moves. He actually moves as Caver is in the air. You have to give Caver the opportunity to come down. Look at Mark Bell making the long pass up underneath and Darius Hall using great athletic ability to be able to hang in the air and get that ball to go in the basket. Western Kentucky continuing to run, continuing to press. Caver has not scored today. The foul was the seventh for the half against Western Kentucky. A one-on-one -on -one opportunity. He missed the front end. Western Kentucky with the ball in a one-point lead with 9.20 remaining. They've led through most of the game. And a lead of nine points at one point of the first half. Terrible pass. Bell threw it away to the hair. And then fouled the hair on the way up. Bell didn't like the call. It was his second foul. And follows the story at the moment, piling up on both sides. Robinson, me, and Brown of the Hilltoppers with 4 H, Karnishavis, and Griffin for Seton Hall with four apiece. The hair nine 
for 11 from the line. The steal was his fifth. Terry DeHair has had to work a lot harder this second half to get open for a shot. You just saw him pass up a three-point shot earlier, and that's because Western Kentucky's playing much better defense out on the perimeter. 25 points for DeHair. His season high is 41 in a game against St. John's. Back and forth we go. It's the Hall by one with nine minutes left. Dardell Mee is at the table getting ready to check back in with his four fouls. Bell went spinning through the lane and missed a shot. Munson dumped it off. Wright challenged the shot and committed a foul as Robinson took it to the rim. Excellent ball movers by the Hilltoppers that time. Getting the ball off the miss by Darnell Mee and continuing to stay with the basketball. Tipping it, tipping it, keeping it alive, making that extra pass to try to get the highest percentage shot. Saw Mee has come back in with four fouls. Two shots for Chris Robinson. One for two from the line. Two for three from the line, and we're tied at 51. The big decision by Ralph Willard to put Darnell Mee back in the game with eight minutes and 50 seconds to go. Darnell's going to have to play very smart while he's on the floor and avoid a lot of the contact and reaching that he did earlier. The freshman Robinson calmly knocked it a pair to put the toppers back up by one with 8.45 remaining. It has turned into a foul festival. That one's the third on Bell. The D hack Danny Hurley. That's the ninth team foul against the Hilltoppers. So in every foul the rest of the way, and that's a lot of time, 841. We'll have two shots. The entire Western Kentucky bench stands whenever Western Kentucky goes back on defense, trying to get this team pumped up, excited, hopefully forcing another turnover. Hurley. 72% free throw shooter. And Western Kentucky chanting Bobby's better reference, obviously, to Hurley's older brother Bobby. We'll play for Duke against Cal later this afternoon here on CBS. And 19 fouls called among the two teams in this half. And only a total of 17 among the two teams in the first half. The free throws could well decide it. Both teams shooting well from the line at the moment. Seton Hall by one, eight and a half minutes remaining. Me, Bell, a three. He's been quiet. 13 points for Bell. Leahy missed an NBA three. Me, the rebound. Robinson missed a three. Haber had a hand of the rebound and hit the deck. Then hit Bell. Me for three. Robinson just fouled out of the game as he went crashing into the back of Luther Wright. So Ralph Willard loses Chris Robinson with 7.54 remaining. That's not as crucial a loss as Darnell Me, should he lose him to the fifth foul. Robinson, a good role player on the team, but he is replaceable. Chris Robinson has worked very hard this evening in this basketball game and does a great job for Ralph Willard's basketball team, but you, you make a strong point there, Sean, that he is a person that Ralph can come in with another player to be able to replace that interchangeable part, but it is going to be important for Western Kentucky to stay out of foul trouble. Putting a guy like Luther right to the foul line might not be a bad idea. He only shoots about 68% from the free throw line. Luther Wright has only played 11 minutes due to the pace of the game. for three from the line. One out of 
two for Wright. It's a one-point lead for Western Kentucky with 7.54 remaining in Orlando. Foul's the big story at the moment. Chris Robinson has just fouled out for Western Kentucky. Darnell, me, and Brian Brown each have four. Karnishevis and Griffin of Seton Hall with four fouls. And Terry DeHare has been Terry DeHare with 25 points and five steals. Western Kentucky with the ball, leading by one. With under eight minutes remaining. In the second round game in the Southeast region, the winner gets Florida State Thursday night in Charlotte. Horn, after a couple of fakes, for sure with a shot. Walker cleared it. There's an opportunity Western Kentucky needed to either get a score or get to the free throw line. Caver and Hurley, both point guards on the floor right now for Seton Hall. Hurley, a big three. That's the first three-pointer of the game for Seton Hall. Hurley has five points. Me with four fouls. Tipped his own miss. Then it was tipped in by Cephas Punton. Cephas, great job by the Hilltoppers to stay after the loose basketball. Really surprised to see Darnell Me staying in there on the trees, amongst the trees, but he's trying to keep his team in this basketball game. Hurley off the Walker. He missed the short one. DJ thought he was fouled by Bell. Walker hits the deck hard with Hall. Seton Hall has the ball with 6.36 remaining. The Pirates and Hilltoppers tied at 57. T.J. Carlissimo and the Pirates with their 12-game winning streak in jeopardy. And the season in jeopardy as well. The men, considered by many around the country, have a great chance to go to the Final Four. They're still very well made. But they're in a fight for their life with Western Kentucky at the moment. Stephen Hall's done a good job at making free throws to get in this basketball game and also now looking for their outside shot. And the man of the moment is Danny Hurley, who's knocked in two three-pointers in a row. The Hall by three. But Western Kentucky has done a, a tremendous job on the defensive end, made some great steals, also forced turnovers early to get the early lead, and now they've gotten back to a situation where they made a basketball game out of it because Seton Hall has gained their confidence. Bell tried to tie with a three and miss. He used his quickness to get it in the corner. This is the largest lead of the game for Seton Hall. Western Kentucky has led throughout most of this one. Florida State routed Tulane in the first game of the day here in Orlando. The Seminoles will meet the winner of this one in the Sweet 16 Thursday night in Charlotte. Six minutes remaining. The leading scorer for Western Kentucky, Darnell Mee with the ball, has four fouls. And his three-pointer is off the mark to hit the shot clock. Seton Hall will inbound. remaining here in Orlando 25 with a shot clock Seton Hall with the ball and a three-point lead Hurley has just knocked in two three-pointers in a row to here Ty running down to the shot clock it's at 10 Hurley went right by me dumped it off for the two for Walker Largest lead for Seton Hall, five points. Me leans in. The shot was off the mark. Help the bucket. Darius Hall scores, and he'll go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. Much better execution by Western Kentucky to get the ball inside the paint to try to get it up on the glass, get back to the board, or at least to the free throw line. And now each team has lost a player to fouls as Adrian Griffin just committed his fifth. He's number four. Where's the foul? So Griffin is fouled out. Chris Robinson of Western Kentucky fouled out earlier. 
Arteris Karnishevis comes back in, and he's playing with four. Darnell Mee playing with four for the Hilltoppers. As you mentioned earlier, making free throws at this time of the game is going to be critical for both these teams. They both shot well today, each at 75% from the line. The difference is, Seton Hall's had many more chances. 18 of 24 are the Pirates. Western Kentucky is 9 of 12. 9 of 13. Karnishevis saved it. It's a three-point lead for Seton Hall. We're under five minutes remaining. chance to drive this home. Paul, only a 48% free throw shooter, made his most important free throw of the year, missed the second. It's a two-point lead. Under three minutes remaining. Walker on the floor with Caver, Karnishevis, Curley, and the hair. Nearly a steal by Hall. Anticipated the pass through the hair and nearly picked it off. 
great defense being played right now by the by Ralph Willard's basketball team at Western Kentucky playing the passing lane, denying that entry pass. Two and a half minutes remaining. 20 on the shot clock. Curly, that's a two. No good. Knee corrals it. Western Kentucky with the ball and a two-point lead with 2.20 remaining. Kentucky by four with a minute 39 remaining. We'll be back in just a moment. Orlando, each team has two timeouts remaining. Each will be shooting two free throws the rest of the way. What could be the most important part of the reset, the arrow points to Kentucky. Western Kentucky has the lead by four with a minute 39 remaining. For those of you just joining us, we mentioned at the outset, P.J. Carlismo was very afraid of the Hilltoppers because they play a trapping and pressing style for 40 minutes, but Seton Hall has not faced this year, and it has caused problems. The hair missed a three. Karnishevis, a huge rebound, but a bigger block by Bunton. Horn juggled it. They were in a hurry with a four-point lead. Seton Hall down four. Bunton, a huge rejection of Karnishevis. Western Kentucky defense has been exceptional on Terry DeHare. He's not been a factor the last seven or eight minutes in this game. DeHare, thought about a three. Takes a three. It bounces off. Karnishevis tipped it. There's a foul. It's on Karnishevis. He has fouled out. charges and then called for the foul on the rebounding activity how about that shot from DeHare from three hit the rim almost hit the top of the backboard and almost dropped back in Terry DeHare has had a defender every time he's come down the court on the offensive end right in his face either keeping him from catching the ball when he does take a shot if there's someone always had a hand right there John Leahy a good three-point shooter has replaced Karnishevis me at the line he has four shooting two games here in Orlando. He's one for two from the line today and two for nine from the field. It's a five-point lead with 59 seconds left. Still five. Leahy the rebound. Two possession game. Had his hands on it. Bell set it off the back of the backboard. Seton Hall to inbound with 34 seconds left. Good defense. They made Seton Hall an awful lot of time. They made Seton Hall work very hard to try to get open for a shot. Terry DeHare again had nowhere to go. Had to give the ball up. Western Kentucky by five with 30 seconds left. DeHare lost it to me. Me. Foul called on Walker.
Great hustle once again by Darnell Mee and the scrap and the hustle to stay with that basketball on the floor. Western Kentucky has been very quick to the ball in loose situations as well as on the boards. Now the Hilltoppers have to make their free throws to finish this game off. Darnell Mee made one out of two a moment ago. Hilltoppers by six with 25 seconds remaining. Still to come, Cal and Duke. The tip time, 7.06 Eastern, Santa Clara and Temple at 6.55. 11 straight points for Western Kentucky. Seton Hall has not had a field goal since 5.06 remained in this one. First turnover created by Western Kentucky. Seton Hall only averages 14 turnovers a game. He said Coach Carlissimo was afraid of the Hilltoppers pressing trapping style, and they've had problems with it all day. Seton Hall never got into a flow. No, they didn't, Sean. And P.J. Carlissimo also said that one day to prepare for a team like this really isn't enough, but you still have to go on. You have to get your guys ready. Watch as much film as you can. winning streak in the country is in very serious jeopardy. Seton Hall came in having won 12 in a row. Hell missed. Still a seven-point lead for the Hilltoppers with 15 and a half remaining. Ralph Willard on the verge of the biggest win of his coaching career. They missed both. Only 13 of 21 for the line. The hair. The NBA three in the timeout. timeout. It's a four-point game with seven seconds left. We'll return to Orlando after this. Seven seconds remaining. Western Kentucky, the seven seed in the southeast on the verge of the upset of number two Seton Hall. Me. Got it in the horn. He's fouled immediately. And if it's on Walker, he is fouled out. Only nine-tenths of a second went off the clock. It is on Jerry Walker. Well, this could well be the end of his career, barring a miracle in the last 6.1. 17 points and nine rebounds for the senior from Jersey City, New Jersey. And on the Western bench, they're ready to explode. This is a proud program with a lot of winning traditions. As a matter of fact, this year's Western Kentucky team, the 29th Hilltopper team to win at least 20 games, and only six schools around the country have had more 20-win seasons. You're talking about Kentucky, North Carolina, St. John's, Louisville, UCLA, and Duke. That is the elitist of company, very good company. But it's been a long time since they had a win like this one. Darren Hood, Horn's the best free throw shooter on this Hilltopper basketball team at 75%. He has 14 points. Seton Hall has one timeout left. They can score and use one last timeout. The lead is six. Leahy looking for the long pass. It connects with the hair. And they get the last timeout. But they're down by four. There's only three seconds left, and they can't stop it again. Put it in the books for WKU. Seton Hall is down by four with 3.2 seconds remaining. So even if they steal and score, they can't stop the clock again. Me stepped over the line and fielded it off the back of Chris, but they rule it as a violation. And really, that's okay, because Seton Hall, as we said, even if they score... Unless it's a three-point play and a foul, Western Kentucky can't lose it. It was a smart play, but what Darnell Mee failed to do was get both feet inbounds before he caught or touched the basketball. And 
we're discussing the amount of time that went off the clock. It was 3.2, so Seton Hall lost the full second and a half on that one play. At this point, it doesn't matter. Seton Hall has no time on the officials are talking it over. for Western Kentucky to go anywhere near the three-point line. They do not. The hair misses. And Western Kentucky has pulled off a big upset, ending the longest winning streak in the country of Seton Hall at 12 games. Seven seed over the number two seed in the southeast. The final score here in Orlando, Western Kentucky 72 and Seton Hall 68. The Hilltoppers advance to the Sweet 16. They'll go to Charlotte to play Florida State on Thursday night. The Chevrolet players of the game for Western Kentucky, Mark Bell, he had 20 points, four of seven from the three-point line. Terry DeHare in his final game at Seton Hall with 30 points and five steals. For Derek Dickey, Sean McDonough saying so long. Let's rejoin Jim Nance in New York. Thank you, Sean. So Western Kentucky into the Sweet 16 for the first time since 1978. By the way, the Hilltoppers went to the Final Four back in 1971.